Yo, 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 I'm Terrell, Hall of Fame, D-Line, TBKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. And yes, this hat drives me crazy. It's not a Texans hat, by the way. Somebody said, why do I have a Texans hat on? It's a Cleveland Guardians hat. I don't wear any teams but the Browns except for Tampa Bay. I have a Tampa Bay shirt and... Eventually, I'm going to give me a Houston Astros hat since I'm in Houston and support those guys. But you'll, you'll be hard-pressed. I'm not going to name every team. I got a few every now and then because of the TBKC shirts that I have coming in. I have a Dodgers hat, both Dodgers, the Brooklyn and the L.A. color matching. But anyway, breeders. Oh, you great motherfucking breeders. This is This is one of the most amazing things, and I think... It's something to talk about. It's something to laugh about. But oftentimes we go through these things where we are convinced by their marketing that they're great breeders. I was asked, who's the best breeders that I know? And I got a bunch of names and I didn't agree with any of them. And not any of them, but a lot of them. And this is why I tell you this. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always told y'all who my favorite breeders are. My favorite breeders are Marco Suarez, dear friend of mine. And him and his beautiful wife do, like, one of the greatest jobs I've seen with dogs in general. Like, when I, when I tell you you're at Marco's house, if the dog poops, it's picked up in a second. <laughs> they're, 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 I, I want to say facility because he does have a facility, but he, uh, the dogs at his home are kept in such immaculate condition. Vitamins, the place is just like so, you can't, it's dogs there and you can't tell it's dogs there. He's, he's one of the best that I've ever like seen take care of dogs, his breeding program, the consistency to be remaking dogs that are very, very similar to Paco with great quality years later. It's uh, Marco's an amazing breeder. Oscar Gomez is in that same category to where very, very super clean facilities. Uh, it's a family affair with him and his kids and his wife and everybody, you know, taking care of everything. And it, it's a level of consistency over 20 years, you know. Um, I can go into some breeders who aren't as far back as that. Or I can go to some who are far, uh, go back as far as them. But the one thing I'll tell you is that it's one key factor as to why I said those two dudes, right? Think about this because we're on the same um, time frame. Marco Suarez and Oscar Gomez. I'll stick to those two so it'll make it easier. Those two particular breeders in over 20 years now showing our age starting to climb up closer to 30 years we moving further and further ahead in this thing these brothers have never been known for having any health issues in over two decades of breeding dogs having dogs marco suarez oscar gomez have not been known to have dogs that have bad hips, bad elbows, bad hearts, bad lungs, bad eyes, anything. Now that's not to say that either uh, either one of them have never produced a dog like that because when you breed long enough, you're gonna have something that comes up. Um, but in those years, they just have it. They don't lack in the look of a dog. As far as overall quality, both have produced some of the most legendary champions in breed history. And they hit the mark on staying within the breed parameters. And I'm talking about going to the original breed parameters. And they stay within the ethical parameters of the dogs continuously being healthy and doing proper testing and pushing these dogs along in the right way. These are breeders to me. A lot of the guys that we see now, they don't qualify. And one of the main reasons why I'll tell you they don't qualify is the things I just said. It's not about time, but it, if at any point that you become a breeder in your bloodline or whatever it is you want to call it, 
is known for certain health issues. You've already failed. It is no way that I can continuous, uh, continuously seriously think about you as a great breeder and really not even a great person if you continue to breed that bullshit. If you're breeding the, you know, the heart issues, the um, any of the issues that will, will that will cause this dog pain or ultimately cause this dog's life to be shortened, you you're a horrible breeder. I don't care how good the dog looks. I don't care who gave you an award for it. I don't care how many people pat you on the back. See, people can be wrong all the fucking time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't change the truth that they're wrong. You just find a lot of people to go along with your wrongs. And any breeder, I don't care what breed it is, if you are pushing forward and you are breeding an unhealthy dog, you can never be in the GOAT conversation for breeders. You know what I mean? You just cannot. Robert Lee is another breeder that I do respect his program. Robert Lee, uh, a little bit younger in the breed than we are, but throughout his time, it's not to say everything is perfect, so I don't want people to jump on any of these breeders because I'm naming them. Because, like I say, everybody's going to have something come up. But throughout his time and being a high-profile breeder, Robert Lee typically has not been known as a breeder whose blood carries a bunch of issues. You know what I mean? And if there is something to come up, you have to break it down to see where it came from, like all other breeders. But I'm talking about the big picture of, of these guys having a worldwide reputation, uh, breeding for a certain style of dog pretty consistently throughout the years, and not having the red flags that their dogs are known for issues. These uh, When you get a dog from these breeders, generally you expect, you know, um, a very healthy American bully. And these are three dudes who I can honestly say throughout the years I've watched, they have been pretty strong and dedicated to doing that, you know? And I will reiterate, I'm not saying that either three of these brothers are perfect because I know somebody's going to want to come in here and dispute something. We all have our warts as breeders. You're going to find one litter you didn't like, or this one puppy had this condition maybe or whatever. And those are the ones you eliminate. But I'm just saying, even if you know something, it's no need for you to just go popping up on here. Well, I got a dog back in the day and he had a messed up foot. Okay. It happens sometimes, but with a huge body of work, you know, like they say, 91% is an A. And I guarantee you, out of those three guys I named, 91% of their dogs are higher, are very, very high quality dogs and very, very healthy dogs. And they stick within the parameters of what the real American bully was meant to be. And they have done this successfully. So those are three breeders that I look up to. Uh, even though they're my cohorts and counterparts, I still can honestly pat them dudes on the back and say that they've done a great job. A lot of you other breeders, I'm not going to name you, but you can take from what I'm saying of this. It's a, it's a high bar that needs to be set for you to call yourself a good breeder and not just going in the ring and somebody giving you ribbons. You know, it has to be all encompassing, but until next time, y'all much love. God bless. Peace.